Hey, whoo, I'm getting blinded. Well, that didn't help at all. How are you doing? It's good to see you. I'm headed down to Florence, South Carolina today, and that's quite a long drive. So, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about, if you're interested. One of the things is perspective and how you, you your perspective can change drastically depending on where you are in your life. You know, when you're in the middle of something, it's kind of hard to see what's going on. You can't really see it clearly. And I have talked about this before, but I, I think it's important. I think a lot of people forget this. I know I do sometimes. You know, it's easy to, to beat yourself up for decisions you made in the past or things that, the, the way you handled things, things you got into, you know, because I've done that. You know, I've, I've made some bad choices in my life. I, I have ended up in bad situations of my own doing. I mean, I can't blame anybody else. You know, I, I made it happen. I made those decisions. Nobody made them for me. It's really easy, too, to get in the habit of blaming other people for your decisions. No, you, you have to take responsibility. Like, that was that was me. Nobody made me do that. That was me. I own it. I accept it. And I'm going to take charge of it and fix what I can. And going forward, I'm going to try to make better choices. Because I want my life to get... I want my life to improve. And if I want my life to improve, I'm going to have to make it happen. I'm going to have to be the one that does it dead skunk back there. I'm waiting to smell it. I saw it. It was laying on the side of the road. We have a lot of skunks around here. I don't smell it. Usually you don't smell it, but I guess that one's caught off guard or something. <laughs> anyway, um, so the thing that made me think of this was a few weeks ago, I was outside washing my car. We had a warm day and I had been meaning to wash my car. I mean, it was, it, I knew it needed to be washed. <clears throat> and my car is kind of, the color of my car, it's like a pearly white. It's not a, a, a really stark white. It's like this pearly, it has a pearly finish to it. Um, like a pearly white. When you get up close to it, you can kind of see that. And I love it when people pass me and then slow down. That's so great. Speed up, thank you. Sorry. Um, this is so great. Don't you love it too when people pass you and then they make you stop so they can turn? Like, thank you. I, you didn't have to pass me at all. I appreciate it. Um, so I was gonna wash my car, <clears throat> and I always I wash my own car. I like to wash my own car. I've been washing my own car for over 30 years. You know, I. My, my brother taught me how to wash my car when I was 16 or about somewhere in there and uh, he was in the Navy but he had come home for the weekend or for something and uh, I had I had a car that you know I had to buy my own car well, my mom bought it but then I had to I was working and I had to make, have to make payments on it you know and so I was getting ready to wash it and my brother was there and he he helped me you know showed me you know use plenty of water you know don't use this kind of soap don't do this you know don't scrub it too hard you're gonna mess up with paint basic stuff that I didn't know I mean I was a 16 year old doofus I didn't know and uh, people have asked me about why don't you do a video an ASMR video washing of washing a car you know I wouldn't do that because as nitpicky and weird as people can get with cooking and baking videos, I just imagine if I made a video washing my car, I can only imagine the criticism and the nitpicking that would go on because people are very precious about how they wash their cars. And trust me, no matter what you're doing to wash your car, somebody out there is going to tell you that that is the worst possible thing you can do. It wouldn't matter what it was. If you used water to rinse it off, somebody could tell you why that is a terrible thing to do. It's, look, soap, a bucket, and some water, and a rag. You're good. Don't scrub it too hard. Don't leave soap on it to dry. You're fine. I've been doing it forever. 
never damage the paint on any car. It's fine. You don't have to get ridiculous with it. I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with my point. It just irks me. So no, I don't want to make a video washing my car because, oh God, people would nitpick it to death. Why did you use that kind of rag? Why are you wearing gloves? You shouldn't wear gloves. Or if you're not wearing gloves, why aren't you wearing gloves? You should be wearing gloves. Why did you use that kind of brush on your wheels? Why did you use that kind of soap? Why did you use that kind of bucket? Why did you use that kind of water? You're using tap water? Oh dear God, you should be using filtered water. Like, shut up! Get bent. Things I want to say to people sometimes. I don't. I just block them and go on with my day. I desperately just want to tell them to shut the hell up. So no, I don't plan to do that because I can only imagine. People are fanatical about how to wash vehicles. I mean, some people are just really crazy about it. I feel about that the way I do about cooking. Hey, as long as you get the job done and it, and it turns out the way you want it to, you did it the right way. You absolutely did. Don't worry about them. They don't have a life. And this is this substitutes for a personality for them. So let, let them have their little moment because otherwise they would have no personality or anything to talk about. Right, just let it go. <clears throat> Sorry, I went way off track. So no, I don't plan to do it because people are awful. <sighs> Plus, I don't, I, mean, I don't know. I could probably do it. I know how I would do it. I just don't want to. Because <laughs> people are awful. You, you make these kind of videos for a while, you kind of get a feel for the ones that are going to be a problem. Like, eh, I don't want to deal with that. Okay. So I knew my car needed to be washed. I had been meaning to do it. This was actually back in December, before Christmas. It was a little while ago. But we had kind of a warm day. And I thought, well... I have time. Let me go out there and wash my car. So I went and got the hose and I hooked it up and I got my bucket. And I do use soap for uh, washing vehicles. I use, I think it's called Mr. Pink. It comes in this little jug and it's this really concentrated pink liquid soap. It's really good. I like it. So I got my soap. I put it in there. Put some water in there. Just I just use old dish rags or whatever. I mean, I just, you know, I don't know. And I do dry it off with microfiber towels after I wash it because I don't like water spots. And it makes it a little, I think it makes it a little shinier. But anyway, so I'm out there and I, I first went out there and I'm getting everything set up and I'm looking at my car and I'm going, it doesn't even look that dirty. I mean, I mean, I know it, I haven't washed it in quite a while and I suppose it needs it. And I vacuumed it out and wiped it down on the inside too. I did that first and then I got ready to wash it. And I thought, it doesn't even look that bad. But, let me tell you, once I got the, the everything ready, I get out there, I spray the car down with the water. And I took that soapy rag, and I do wear rubber gloves because otherwise my nails always get all messed up. It just, my nail polish just gets chipped all to hell for some reason. And uh, I took that soapy rag and I just wiped it down the side of the car and it was like oh my god the difference like I couldn't believe how dingy it suddenly looked when I went like that and just wiped oh I smell chicken chicken houses Woo! you live near chicken houses oh oh god Blech. yeah that's a chicken house they must be cleaning it out or changing out the flocks or something stinks chicken shit stinks man all right so I did like that and in this th like the part that I had just cleaned with the rag looked so different from the rest of the car it was like shocking all of a sudden that part that was unclean almost looked gray it didn't before it didn't it looked perfectly fine like that it doesn't even look dirty but you know, once I cleaned a spot, I could see the difference. It was it was startling how different it looked. And it's because, I think it's because, you know, it gradually gets dingier and dingier over time. And you don't notice it because you see it every day. And I think sometimes our lives can get like that. 
I know I've been through periods of time in my life like that. If you've ever been in a, an abusive relationship, especially whether it's with a significant other or a parent or a friend, sibling, coworker, whatever it is, spouse, I mean, it could just be, you know, it might not be bad at the start, but over time, it just gradually gets worse and worse and worse, but you don't really notice it or you just try to explain it away, especially, I think, if you grew up in a toxic family structure where that to you is normal, your brain is going, what's the big deal? There's nothing weird about this. You know, you're getting upset over nothing. I think you're overreacting a little bit. Um, but once you, you know, for me, it took just a defining moment. There was just a little, one particular relationship. There was one little thing that happened, and I guess it was just the last straw. And I, I remember I, I I got in my car and I just went, I went to get some food and I'm sitting in the parking lot in an Arby's and I said this, something's gotta, something's gotta change. Somebody's gotta go. It's either gonna be me or that person. Somebody's gotta go. I can't live like this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And it was at that moment I decided things had to change and I decided, yeah, things are gonna change. We're not going on this way. Nope. And, uh, and once you get out of it and you step away and you look back at it, it's like swiping that clean place on, you, on the door of my car. Like, oh my, you know, the more I think about it, that situation, that situation was really messed up. It really was. I tolerated a lot of crap for so long. But when you're right in the middle of it, you're just trying to survive. I mean, you're just trying to get through the day. You're not, you can't step back and look at it objectively. You can't. It's like I, I heard a, a similar little metaphor the other day in, in a video where it was a, um, a YouTuber who's a therapist talking about uh, dysfunctional families. And he said, it's like you're a mouse that's been sucked up in a hurricane, or in, I'm sorry, in a tornado. When you're in the middle of that tornado and everything's whirling around and you're just trying to survive the moment, you can't see, you can't see how big that tornado is. You can't see what what else it's destroying. All you're worried about is the fact that you were sucked up in it right now. But if it spits you out or you get out of it somehow, then you might be able to look back and go, "Damn, that's a big tornado." But when you're in the middle of it, you can't really see it for what it is. All you can see is what's right in front of you. And that right there is enough of a reason to not beat up on yourself. Like, why did I stay so long? Why did I put up with it for so long? You were just trying to survive. Okay? Don't sit there and, and judge yourself based on what you know now. Because what you know now, you didn't know back then. You didn't have the perspective then that you have now. It's not fair. It would be like saying to a kindergartner, why are you not kicking ass on the SAT right now? Because they are not prepared for that yet. They don't have the knowledge and experience to, to achieve that right now. It's not because they're stupid. It's not because they are a glutton for punishment. They can't see it for what it is. And I, I think, you know, some people stay in bad situations like that for decades. And I feel for them. They get sucked up in that hurricane and they can't get out. And it's very easy if you've never been in an abusive relationship. It's very easy to say, well, if it's so bad, why don't you just leave? It, trust me, I, I don't know how to explain it to you in a way you would understand. It is not that simple. It is not that simple. For a million different reasons. It is not that simple. They may have obligations to their family. They may, their family may have cultural or religious values that make it damn near impossible to leave. You will be shunned if you do. 
you may have children in the situation, you may worry about what will happen to them, you may think that staying is the best thing to do. My parents did that. My parents were married for 33 years, and that was about 20 years too long. But they stayed together because of, well, they, my mom said they stayed together because of my brother and me. They, they felt like splitting up would hurt us more, but honestly, I, I don't think it would have. I think we would have been, all four of us would have been better off if they had divorced much sooner. But number one, I don't know that. I don't know how it would have turned out. I have no idea. Number two, that was not how they saw it, so that's not the decision they made. They stayed together, they were miserable, we were all miserable, and it really just basically just sucked. And when my mom told me they were splitting up, I was so happy. She thought I'd be upset. Like, why would I be upset? No, this is great. <laughs> this is awesome. What took you so long? You know, but I get it. I get it. Um, so, it can be easy to get used to a toxic situation. It can be very easy because usually... I think they kind of develop gradually because an abuser knows if like if they went on a first date with you and they smacked you across the face you're not going to go out with them again they know that they know that they have to be kind of gradual about it they do they, I think they're very aware of like how committed you are to them and how hard it would be for you to leave whether it's a significant other or you know a parent whatever you know they know how much they figure out by studying you they figure out how much crap you will put up with and they're constantly testing that they're constantly pushing it to see what they can get away with and they'll back off for a little bit if they need to but they never stop pushing because abusers that's what they do they abuse they don't change they may change their tactics if they have to. Like, for example, you have a parent who beats their kid. You know, well, I'm tired of CPS complaining about all the bruises, so I'll just destroy the child's spirit and self-confidence instead. I'll just beat them in a way that doesn't show. I will beat them down with words. Yeah, they can't do anything about that. And they really can't. Like, there are no, there are no physical bruises from that but it's just as damaging and it's just as dangerous to that child. Abusers do what they do. And I know there's the saying, hurt people, hurt people, but honestly, I think that just gives them an out. It's almost like an excuse, you know. Well, I can't help it. Well, then I just need to get the hell away from you then. This is a very flattering look, isn't it? I feel like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Sorry, the sun is blinding me. Um, so, yeah, hurt people hurt people. Well, that may be true, but that doesn't mean that you have to tolerate it. Don't sit there and make excuses for their behavior. Well, they had a bad childhood, or they're dealing with a lot of stress at work. You know, they didn't mean it. No, they did. They did. Oh, they love me, though. People who love you don't treat you like crap. It's that simple. If they loved you, they would not treat you like crap. They would have respect for you, and they would treat you with decency and, and respect. I mean, would you ever treat them the way they treat you? Probably not. So why are you putting up with it? Why do you tolerate it? I think for a lot of people, I know for me, my life was like that dingy car for a long time. I could look at it and go, well, I mean, it's not that bad, you know, I mean, yeah, I know it's been, it's been getting worse and it, 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 I, I guess something needs to be done, but I don't know that it's that bad, but that one day there was just, there was just a final straw and it was like, I took that rag and I wiped the side of the car and saw how bad it really was. It's like, I could finally see, I can't take this anymore. I have to wash this car. And it's work. It takes work to change your life. And it can be scary. It can be stressful. So worth it. So worth it. And it can take a long time. It takes years sometimes to get away from abusive people. 
especially if you have kids with them. It can take, trust me, it can take a long time, like, oh, I don't know, 13 years of hell, but you can do it. You can do it. And then when you're done, you can stand back and look at that shining, clean car and go, wow. That honestly looks better than I ever thought it could. It looks so much better now. I didn't realize how bad it had gotten. And that's the way it is sometimes in life. You can't really see it when you're in the middle of it. You can't see it without your perspective. And I hope today that anybody out there dealing with something and you feel like if you keep if you keep having to rationalize somebody's behavior, well, they were having a bad day. Well, they, I, I should have made myself more clear. They didn't understand what I was trying to say. And they blew up at me, but it was really my fault because I should have been more clear again because it keeps happening. No, no. Don't do what I did. Don't keep making excuses, even if it's just in your head, because for me, it was just in my head. Oh, he's dealing with a lot right now, you know, a lot of stress, blah, blah, blah. No, bullshit. Being under stress does not give you the excuse to treat other people shamefully. It doesn't. You do not get to kick the dog when you come home if you had a bad day at work. That dog had nothing to do with your bad day. You do not get to hurt them. And they don't get to hurt you either. I know you have worth. I know you are a you are a decent person and you you deserve respect. You deserve to be treated with respect just like any human being does. The last person on earth that should be treating you poorly is the person who claims to love you. People who love you don't do that. They don't, they don't treat you like crap. They don't call you names, run you down, criticize you, you know, joke about you in front of other people. They don't make you the butt of their jokes. That makes me sick when I hear people do that. Like to their significant other or their kid or whatever with the with the person standing right there like you're an asshole you're you're using this person this person who is significant to you you you're using them as a joke you suck now people who love you don't do that and it's easy to forget that when you're exposed to it all the time i know i know if all they ever do is run you down and try to isolate you, keep you away from people, and they have a million different excuses for doing that. Um, we don't have time to go hang out with your parents. I'm not going to another stupid family reunion of yours. You know, it's, no, that's bullshit. We're not wasting our afternoon on that again. And then when they do go, they sit there and mope the entire time looking at, checking the time, like, is, is it time to go? Can we go? I, I have things to do. Can we go? And they don't talk to anybody, and it's really uncomfortable and embarrassing. And yeah, so they're they're trying to make you not want to go. Is what they're doing. They're trying to make you think, well, I don't want to go through that again. Maybe we just need to stop going. And it's very gradual. Again, it's just like any other kind of abuse. It's very gradual. They don't start out with that, you know. But it's gradual. They will gradually isolate you. They'll start watching where you go, who you talk to, you know, they'll start going through your phone. I mean, they, they become very paranoid, but it's gradual and you don't see it until one day you do. And I hope one day you can get away from that because trust me, you get that car clean, you will not believe how much better the whole world looks. Everything looks better. You will physically feel better. You can get back to yourself. If you feel like I hate myself. I hate the person I have become. You don't you don't have to stay that way. It's not permanent. It is not irreversible. If you can get away from that toxicity, you can get back to who you were before. And not only that, you can get you can be even better than you were before because you will be smarter, you will be stronger, you will be more self-confident. You will be an even better version of yourself than you were before. I promise you will be. So that is everything I have to say about perspective today. And I hope one day you get to see that beautiful, pretty, clean car and you will.
will smile and be proud of yourself for what you've done, and you should be. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great 